Hey what's up guys, in today's video we are going to have a look at Resident Evil Village on the iPhone 15 Pro. Not the Max, just the Pro. I don't have the Max. Also this video is just about the iPhone 15 Pro. In a few days, maybe on the weekend, I'll have a look at the M1 and M2 iPad version, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, enjoy! Alrighty, as we get into this, it's definitely worth talking about the supported devices for RE Village on iOS. We've got the iPhone 15 Pro, the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and an M1 or M2 iPad Pro or an M1 iPad Air. I also briefly want to go over the tech involved with this port. For starters, it's a Metal 3 game. In fact, it might be Metal 3.1 as it requires iOS 17, and iOS 17 now supports Metal 3.1, but that's pure speculation. The game also supports Metal FX upscaling on iPhone and iPad. It has two modes, quality mode and performance mode. This is one of the first games to support HDR on iOS, and it's awesome. Unfortunately, I can't show HDR due to technical reasons, but it really does add to the immersion in this game, even if you're playing on a really small display. Thankfully, this game has iCloud backup between iPhone and iPad. You have the ability to upload and download saved data via iCloud Drive on iPhone and iPad. You can also access local saves which are stored under the Files app. This is really cool and more games need to do this on the App Store. Unfortunately, and this is really, really annoying, save data cannot be uploaded and downloaded between macOS and iOS devices. It's not a universal app with the Mac App Store version. RE Village on iOS has fully customizable graphic options, same as Windows, PC and Mac. On iPhone 15 Pro, it has no ray tracing support, same as Mac and iPad. You know, you might be disappointed by this, but as you'll come to find, I don't think the iPhone 15 Pro is even powerful enough to support ray tracing here. The game is missing VSync in the settings. Perhaps VSync is enabled by default in the background. This is what I think based on my testing anyway. The game file size with all content installed is 16.41 gigabyte on iPhone 15 Pro compared to 34.49 on Mac. It can vary a few megabytes on various devices, so it might be a bit different for you. I would say that this game probably uses iOS texture compression algorithms, ASTC, to remove unused stuff on iOS. Now let's go over the controls for this game. First, touch controls. The game uses an on-screen controller layout for touch gameplay, and it sucks big time. It seems like Capcom and Apple really want you to play with a controller, as it's, it's so difficult to play this game with these touch controls. The on-screen controller UI gets in the way of menu interaction too. It's just, it's so ugly and intrusive. Thankfully, you can customize the controller layout, but overall, it still sucks, and I don't even recommend that you play this with the touch controls. The game has full controller support with rumble vibration. Weirdly though, for me anyway, it thinks every controller is an Xbox. If I plug in a PS5 controller or a PS4, it doesn't have a PlayStation controller interface. I'm also very sad that this game has no dual sense support for triggers and haptic feedback like the PS5 version. This is the same case as the Mac version. If you have an iPhone 15 Pro, I definitely, definitely suggest playing the game with something like a backbone controller or something that has a controller mount. It is really good and it's kind of like you're playing the game on a, on a Switch or a portable console. It's, it's really good actually. Some users have been connecting their iPhone to a monitor and you can play it that way and it's more like a console experience. But for me, I don't really recommend it or like it because for starters, it mirrors the iPhone display so there are black bars on the side. You're playing at a super low resolution on iPhone 15 Pro. 
which isn't ideal when it's blown up. Text is very hard to read, especially if you enable metal effects, which is often important in this game. Now, you might argue that you could raise the resolution up, but as we come to find, this game has very bad performance at high resolutions. But if you have an iPhone 15 Pro and you want to do this, go ahead, it's just not for me. Okie dokie, now let's move over to the performance. For starters, here is default graphics, which is 1560 by 720, and basically a mix of medium and low graphics. You can see the settings are used on screen now for this. Unfortunately, the game never gets anywhere close to 60 FPS. It typically hangs around 30 to 40 FPS. Disappointing. I mean, yes, but at the end of the day, you got to remember that this is a phone and it's quite impressive for that. It's very similar to playing a Switch in portable mode, which plays games at 720p. And you also have to consider the Metal FX is upscaling a lower resolution, playing at a lower resolution that's then upscaled to 720p. I don't know what that resolution is because Capcom won't tell me what the scaling options are for performance and quality, but I thought that was worth noting. In terms of temperature when playing in this mode, for me, I saw a peak of 47 degrees after playing the game for many hours and then maybe like three hours in, in this mode. Moving on, let's see how the game plays at 720p medium graphics, so it is a little bit higher. I've enabled some higher quality graphics and you can see what these are on screen now. To get this performance though at higher settings, you must enable a 30 FPS cap. Doing this will provide a mostly locked 30 FPS with some stutters. Unfortunately, that's impossible to get around because this is a very big game. In my opinion, this is the default settings that Capcom should have gone with. In many ways, I actually think that the game should have been locked to settings like this instead of allowing the user to customize settings. I also noticed the temperature only got up to about 45 degrees when playing at these settings. Pretty gosh dang hot, but it's a little bit cooler than the default settings because it's not aiming for a really high FPS. Next, I tried the game at 900p, which is 1952 by 900, and then I put some of the settings to high and some to medium. You can see the settings are used on screen now for this. Playing at these settings is not good. The performance can be around 30 FPS. The main issue is that the game often crashes. The game doesn't really use above 6 gigabyte of memory here, so I don't know why it's crashing. This is very sad for me because while the performance is tolerable and the resolution is higher, it's just that the game unfortunately crashes um, on the odd occasion, and that's just not what you want. And I played this game in this mode for about three hours, and I noticed maybe six or so crashes. While it's tempting to play at these settings, I would not suggest doing it right now until Capcom put out a performance update for this game, if they ever do. With these 900p settings, the temperature gets up to 43 degrees for me. I also wanted to see how this game goes at max resolution, which is 2556 by 1179 and max graphics. It does terribly. It crashes within like eight seconds for me and goes back to the, uh, to the home screen. It was very, very hard to actually get a reading of the performance here because it would crash so quickly.
But I ended up being able to play the game for quite a bit later on in the game during the factory, factory sequence. And it would be 20 FPS, 10 to 20 FPS, sometimes up to about 30. It's not playable. I, I, I was expecting that, I just wanted to see how it would go, and it doesn't go well. <laughs> So what about playing this game at the lowest graphics possible? Is 60 FPS achievable? This is 720p and with everything on low. And unfortunately, no, it doesn't help at all. It gets up to about 40 FPS more frequently, sometimes up to 50. And the temperature would reach about 43 degrees in this state. I don't suggest playing lowest graphics to achieve a higher frame rate because the game looks awful. It's also worth taking a look at how Metal affects, affects performance in this game. It's not as significant as you might expect. It, it's still there, it still does improve performance. Here is the game playing 720p medium graphics. With metal effects off, it's about 30. With metal effects quality, it's usually about 35. And with performance, it can go into uh, the 40s. Yeah, there is a bit of an increase there, but it's definitely not as significant as playing the game on Mac, which sees a huge increase in performance. So, what are we thinking of Resident Evil Village on the iPhone 15 Pro? In my opinion, and don't take this too personally, I don't think it's very good. It has its performance issues, its bugs, and it's annoying that it's not universal with Mac. But at the end of the day, it's good to have it here. It's a full-fledged AAA game on your gosh dang phone. And we don't get that very often. And if we do, it's usually pretty old. Alien Isolation from 2014. Divinity Virtual Sin 2 from 2017, and so forth. All we get AAA games that are converted into free-to-play mobile garbage. And yeah, so really I want you guys to support this full AAA game on mobile so we can get more stuff like this in the future. It's going to be really interesting to see how many people actually purchase this because, you know, not many people out there really have an iPhone 15 Pro. How many of you watching right now have an iPhone 15 Pro? I'm probably not many of you. So it's gonna be really interesting to see if this has any effect on gaming, on mobile and the Apple ecosystem and so forth. Anyways, it's getting pretty hot in here. So I'm gonna say goodbye now. And I look forward to the uh, iPad video, which should be out in a few days or so forth, depending on how complex that version is. Bye.